Hi there, I'm Chris Kessler from Kessler Science, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use my science reading comprehension resource for online learning. We've added a new update that allows you to assign individual articles to students and have them respond via a Google form. I'm going to walk you through that now. You're looking at the quick reference guide that shows uh, you all the steps that we're going to be covering. This is also included in the teacher directions document that you'll get with the product. If you purchase the product on my site, then you'll need to log in at lessons.kesslerscience.com and then go to your dashboard. From there, you'll click on the Science Reading Comprehension product and you'll see a list of all the articles and files that you have access to. At the bottom of the screen, you can download the files that you want to work with or print directly from there. I'm going to pretend that I just downloaded the files. So what you're seeing right now is called Finder on the Mac. And if you have a Windows computer, this is the same thing as Windows Explorer. We're going to be working with the Acoustical Instruments article throughout this video. So I'm just going to pretend that, you know, we're, that we just purchased this alone, you know, even though that has an additional 30 articles. We're just working with this particular article. The first thing you're going to want to do is decide uh, which version you want to send to your students. You'll notice two reading passage files. There's one that has a 1A and one that has a 1B. The 1A passage is the on-level passage, and the 1B uh, file is modified, uh, and it's actually a lower level reading passage. So you need to decide which one you're going to want to send your students. Next, you're going to want to open up the Google Form, which is linked in the teacher directions. And this is where you'll manage your digital answer sheets for your students. I've already got it saved out here, um, so I'm going to just open the browser and hit return. And the first thing it's going to ask me to do is to make a copy so that you're going to have your own version of the Google form. So I'm going to click on make copy. That way you can make all the edits you want to it and it's not going to mess up the master version. And then lastly, you're going to want to click on restore here. And this, the reason for this is some of the files will require your students to upload different images, and this is just creating a place to upload that. So you'll click on Restore when you see this little box. Okay, this is the main Google form, and it's not the form that you're gonna share with your students. This is the back end of the form where the teacher can control all the settings. Let's go through some of the settings. So self-grading is totally optional, and so if you, want, if you don't wanna do that, just go ahead and skip this section if you choose to grade manually, but I'm gonna go through some recommended settings here. The combination of options will affect the way students interact with the form and the answers, and these are kind of my recommended auto grade settings on this form. At the top right of the form, you're gonna see a little gear box, and you're gonna click that, that's the settings box, and they're gonna click on the quizzes tab, and there is a slider button that says make this a quiz. So you can turn this off or, or, or leave it turned on. Note that you're going to need to add point values to your answers where possible. If you're, if you're going to have this self grading, you're going to have to make sure that you assign point values to the questions. And I'll show you where to do that in just a moment. You're also going to want to choose later after manual review if it's not already selected. This prevents students from being upset by seeing, uh, you know, partially graded forms due to long answers or, um, uh, you know, that need manual grading. You're going to turn off the missed questions. It's off by default here. And the correct answers is also off by default. default. Otherwise, students will be able to improve their grades by trial and error or have a complete answer key to, sh key to share with others, you know, um, in this remote learning environment or, or any kind of environment where they can share answers with other students. And then you'll click on, um, we're going to leave this check point values and then click save down here. Otherwise, if you do not click save, none of these settings will save. Okay. And then you're going to click, re if you ever see that, f that little message that I just got, just click restore on that every single time. Okay, we're back at the, um, the form here, the Google form, and we turn the auto grader on. Now, I'm, I'm going to suggest that with the science journal articles, these reading passages, 
there are very few multiple choice questions. Most, in fact, most of them are short answer responses. So auto grading, Google's not going to be able to auto necessarily auto grade it for you because it's just not that smart. It can, it can auto grade multiple choice and things that have a finite answer, but, um, or excuse me, a definitive answer, but it's not going to be able to grade short answer choices. However, that said, you're going to want to assign point values if you are going to grade it at all. So the students know how many, how much each question is worth. And then when you're giving the final grade, you can go in and assign the different number of points for that particular question. So the way you do that is you'll scroll down to, uh, for example, let's look at this question here and we will click on answer key and you'll be able to assign it. So this, maybe say this question is worth 10 points and you have to click done on this to make sure that it saves in there. And now it will say it's worth 10 points and you can do that for all the questions um, through the list here. If it's a multiple choice question, you can actually choose the correct answer and um, if auto grading was on, it would actually grade that, that section for you or that little module for you. There's also a place to add answer feedback in here so that when you're sending the responses back to the students or their grades back to the students, um, you can actually explain the answer and why it was correct uh, along with this feedback that gets sent back to the students. So you can make that change there. Then I also wanna add at the top of the form, I skipped right over this, but there are required fields, uh, the email address, first name and last name and class period. I personally would make those required. Um, this particular form only has this one required and that's noted by this asterisk right here. But you won't have any um, uh, forms without names on them if you make that information required. Specifically that that class period because you you know when you start grading and, and sorting um, the grades here, it's gonna be helpful to know which class period is, um, to enter into your grade book. If you know, you can sort them all by class period one, class period two, and so forth. Okay, let's look at some other settings here. So by default, students can edit their responses to change their answers after they click submit. We're gonna wanna go back into the settings and I'm gonna tell you some of the recommended settings that I would switch if I were in your shoes. So back up in the top here, you'll see this little gear, that's the settings and you'll click on the general tab. That's the one that's selected by default. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do is limit students to one response. And this is important because um, it, each time they click on the link to reach the form, they're gonna create a new response if you don't, if you don't do that. So you wanna make sure you wanna limit, limit them to one response. Also, you want to allow students to edit after they submit, or excuse me. Let's take a look at some of the other settings that I'm going to recommend. So we're gonna click back up on this gear on the top right hand corner. This is for settings. And then the main tab that comes up is the general tab. Now by default, students can edit their responses uh, to change their answers after they click submit. And we want to turn this on for this reason. S if students are working on part of like, you know, like part one of the reading passage that, you know, they have like 30 minutes to work on it. And then they want to come back and work on it later that evening. You will have to have this turn on. So you want to choose and by default it's on uh, edit after submit. Otherwise when they click submit, they will no longer be able to go back and edit their answers. So we want to make sure that that's, that's turned on so they can continue working at their, um, at their leisure. And then the other thing is you want to limit students to, to one response. So we're gonna actually turn this on. And the reason you wanna do this is if you don't limit them to one response, they're, every time they click on the link that you send them via email or Google Classroom, however you send it to them, 
it would create a new student record for the, that person. And you don't want that. You want it to just be tied to that one particular student uh, one time so that they can go back and continue to work on it throughout. At the bottom right hand corner, you're going to click save. Okay, let's now take a look at a couple of different ways you can grade this. If you have quizzes turned on, then you can go up to the responses here and you can see that I've done a, a, a test response. So I've actually gone in and filled out the form myself. And when I click this, if you click on the individual tab, so there's three tabs, summary, question, and individual, you can choose the individual, so it's Chris at Kessler Science, and then you can go through and um, look at all of the different answers. And you can add individual feedback, assign point values for each of the questions, and then submit it back to the students. So you can do, do it that way. There's also another way to do this, and it's the same way, so let me get back to the main form. You'll click on responses, but instead of looking at the responses here within the form, you can actually create a spreadsheet by clicking on that little, let me show you again here, the little green uh, icon here for Google Sheets. Create a brand new spreadsheet, and what's gonna happen is a brand new spreadsheet is gonna be created that has all the students in their own row with all their answers um, in each of the different columns throughout. Now, I again, I just have dummy data here, but you can see, um, you can look at the answers this way too. So if you wanted to like just grade a couple of different questions, you could go through and then assign them grades this way and you could go through and add the score. Now remember, it this score is uh, invalid because I only assigned five points to three different questions and I left the rest of them blank. So it's not gonna give you, any good data to anybody right now, but this is just another way to look at it. And one cool thing about the form, let's say maybe you graded it the other way, you graded it within the Google form itself by using this method, by going the individual method, and then you could go and create the spreadsheet and you can sort these columns any way you want. So if you wanted to enter your grades into the grade book, you could just sort by class period and then go down the list and import it that way. Or you wanted to sort by score, however you want to do this, that you can you can sort these, uh, you know, this particular sheet. Lastly, for distance learning, you're going to want to send two things to your students. The first is you're going to send either the on-level reading passage or the modified reading passage. And then you're going to need to send them a link to the form. Now, this is very important. You do not want to send them the link that's in the teacher directions. You don't want to send them the link to this back. Remember, I call this kind of the back end Google form where we make all the changes. You don't send them the link to this. This, see this little eyeball up here? This is what the students are actually going to see. So they don't see all the, the back end stuff and the settings. They're just going to see like, what, what do I need to answer and where do I need to answer it? So. This is the link that you're going to send them. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can click on that little eyeball like I did and get this super long URL, but there's a way to send a, a shorter link as well. We'll go back here and we're going to click on um, send up at the top. We're going to choose uh, the link button right here. We're going to click on shorten URL and it's going to give you a shorter URL that you can paste into an email, put into Google Classroom, et cetera. Um, that email will have to be typed exactly as it's written or clicked exactly as it's written here. So it automatically, it, I don't know if you saw that or not, but it automatically said it copied it to my clipboard, but you can Command C or Control C to copy it to your clipboard and then, and then paste it out to wherever you would like to do that. Or you can click copy here and it, it does that for you. So it says copy to clipboard. And, and that's it. So you'll send that uh, Google form off, you'll send the PDF off, and they will be able to rock and roll and get started with uh, a distance learning uh, science journal reading passage. And it's gonna be really great for your students. Uh, one last thing, that due to copyright issues, please do not make these files public on any kind of um, uh, personal website. 
Uh, you are allowed to, however, upload them to Google Classroom because students need a login to access that, but please do not put them on your personal website that just anyone on the internet can have access to. We, we gave you some uh, you know, best practices in the teacher directions to kind of guide you with the copyright issues. Okay, you're ready to go. Thanks for listening. Take care.